This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory, and in this video we're going to go over the Objective 3.4 practice tasks for the Microsoft Office Specialist 2016 Study Guide for Microsoft Excel Expert Exam. Let's get started. So the first thing that they're asking us to do in practice tasks for Section 3.4 is to open the 3.4 workbook. I have the folder here selected. We'll double click to open up. Now, as an aside here, I, I want to comment on Objective 3.4. I think a lot of the ideas and techniques in this chapter are probably the most important throughout the entire Excel expert study guide. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that's what you'll be tested on most, but as far as what I would consider someone who's expert in using Excel, it comes down to the techniques that are in this chapter. What's sad to me is that this chapter does such a poor job of of organizing and explaining what all of these things can do. Now for this particular set of videos I'm gonna stick fairly closely to what the curriculum says um, but certainly after you pass the exam make sure you go through this chapter to master all of the techniques on it. Also check out some of the other videos that I'm doing which are going to expand on some of the ideas that are in place here. But this is also a lot of fun things in here as far as Excel goes so let's get started with them. The first thing that we need to do is create a query. Now, if you come from a financial analysis background or a modeling background, you may not do a lot of data handling with Excel. So some of this might be new for you. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, perform a query. Now, Excel has a lot more powerful tools that are available than just in regular Excel through Power Query and Power Pivot. But this will give you a little bit of taste of, of what those additional utilities can do. Uh, and with Excel, we can get data from a, a variety of sources, um, from other files, uh, from the web, from other tables and ranges. Uh, in this case, we're going to grab it from a CSV file that's been provided. So in the Data tab, under the Get and Transform Data, we're going to select from Text or CSV. We have a export 3.4 CSV file that's been provided to us with the author's downloads. We'll open that up. It's going to take a second to prep that data for us. Uh, now we have a dialog window. Uh, and this is going to give us a quick preview of what the data looks like. Uh, it's going to identify what the delimiter is. In this case, we know it's a comma file. Um, but you could use a file that's divided by lots of other options, whether it be spaces, semicolons, colons. Uh, we'll leave it at comma, though, which is what this one requires. Now, we also have the ability to edit it from within the screen by clicking the Edit button. But we'll follow the order of the request in the practice tasks, and we'll just load this query into the workbook. We're going to do this by clicking the Load button here at the bottom. And when that occurs, we're going to end up with a new sheet, which is going to have all the data from that comma separated value document. Uh, we can scroll all the way to the right here. So you can see there's quite a variety of columns here. Uh, it's telling us here there's actually 2,155 rows that are in this particular table. So that wraps up the first set of tasks. Uh, like I mentioned, this is organized a little bit confusingly here, but we'll, we'll stick with it the way that's in the book. Uh, the next thing we want to do is open the query editor. Okay, and so in order to do that, um, we're going to go from the Home tab into the Data tab again. And from here, we're going to select Queries and Connections. And in my case, it pops up this little sidebar here. I'm going to double-click this. And when I do that, this is our query editor. And once we've done that, we can actually modify um, the data here and how it displays in our Excel file. Now, it's not going to change the original CSV file. That's going to stay intact. And what's nice about using a query like we've performed here, if for some reason I needed to go and add, say, more data or change that CSV file, the next time I open up this Excel file, it'll actually integrate all those changes for me. So it'll every time this opens up, it's going to go back through the file path that I have established here and grab whatever data is in that file at that point in time. However, we can change how that data shows up in Excel without uh, impacting what the original was. 
So we have a couple examples of what we can do with it. So the first thing they want us to do is in the contact name column, um, split it. So you can see our columns across the top here. So I'm going to highlight the contact name. And what we want to do is we want to change it. Another word for change is transform. So we're going to go onto the transform tab on this new ribbon here. And once we're in here, we're going to split the column, okay, which is in the text column section. So we're going to click on that. We want to split it by a delimiter as it's given us that clue and the fact that it wants us to use a uh, space character is what our delimiter is going to be. So I will click on that. It comes up with a new dialog box for us. Um, again, they've told us to use a space, but with this drop down box, uh, we can use other delimiters as well, but we will leave it set on space and we've been instructed to use the rightmost delimiter. So I'll click on that there. I'll click OK. So now you can see in this table that the contact name has been split into two columns. If we wanted, we could rename them. Uh, and that's normally what I would do at this point is I would call this uh, first name in this column. And then in this column, I would call it last name. However, we've not been instructed to do that. But best practices, you'd want to do that at this point. The next thing we're going to do is actually create a new column. And so in order to do that, you can actually see all the columns that we have here. So what we're going to do is instead of transforming a column, we're going to click on the Add Column tab. And what we're going to create is a custom column. OK, and with this, we actually get to do a little bit of uh, Excel uh, formula creation. Um, I, you know, and I off the top of my head, I, I, I believe this is a DAX formula um, that may not mean a whole lot to you. But uh, for most most respects, DAX and the formulas you're used to in Excel are going to uh, behave the same way. So we've been instructed to create a new column and name it invoice total. So I'm going to type that into the new column name section here. I'll spell it properly here. And now I'm going to add a new column formula. And so I have a little bit of help here. I can use these available columns here on the right hand side to help me with this formula. And what we've been in instructed to do is to display the sum. So that's addition of the extended price and the freight column. So extended price, I'm going to double click on this. And there, extended price has been brought into our formula area. Since it's sum, I'm going to use the plus key to add a plus sign. Next, we need to add an additional, our, our freight is what we're going to add to it. And I'll click insert to add that into here. So our new column is going to be called invoice total. And it's going to add these two columns together. There's a little bit of a helper here saying, hey, it doesn't appear that there's any mistakes. So I will click OK. And I can see now here on the right hand side, uh, there's a new column and it's the invoice total. And so what it's actually done is it's added this value here, 1032 and 1251 together to give me this value here. And it's completed that math all the way through. So now that we've done that, we've been instructed to return the transform data to Excel. In order to do that, I'm going to go to Home tab, click Close and Load. And now we're back on our original Excel worksheet. And I can see now that I have this column is now split into two. And on the right hand side, I now have my invoice total. Now again, what's important with this is that our original data file, that CSV file, has not changed. Uh, despite the changes that we've made here. And any changes I make to that CSV file independently, or let's say that's a, a query from another data program that we have, and that's its output. As we get new output and we load it into this document, it's going to perform these same tasks for us. It's going to do this math here, and it's going to split the name column for us as well. So lastly, um, we need to change the name of this worksheet to invoices, and uh, we're going to use shortcuts for that. Uh, with our keyboard. So I'm going to hit Alt and H to go to my Home tab. I'm going to hit O for Format. And that kind of midway through, it says Rename Sheet, which is R. 
I'm going to hit that and now I'm going to use my mouse just to highlight. You can see that this is highlighted now. All I need to do is start typing. And we've renamed the sheet after I hit enter here. So that's all done without using my mouse. Uh, thanks for watching this video. We're going to dive into the next section where we do some consolidations in the next video. Thanks for watching. This is Craig with Karshalton Advisory.